This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person, the show where I'm perfect and you're a person. This morning I watched a juggling tutorial at six in the morning. <laughs> Join us next week. <laughs> and, and thank you so much for listening. That's our show. Big Dude, thank you. <laughs> instantly my favorite show if you really did that. If you, homie, if you invited me over here to, to sit, sit here. in this beautiful room for a second and do that, I would tell... Everybody yeah. about this show. Oh, tell all your friends. Mm-hmm. Miles, a 60 second podcast could be better, but Dude, um, really, really good. I did watch a, yeah, it was sort of, I woke up, I have a very young son, seven months old and I sat on the floor with him and he was playing with little balls and I was like, how hard can it be to juggle? Yeah. Uh, not possibly that hard, right? Could yeah. probably learn in 15 minutes. Sure. And I watched a juggling tutorial from a guy that was like, welcome back to circus online. I'm teaching you all the stuff about the circus <laughs> online. <laughs> yeah. Start with one ball. And then I kind of gave up it for a little bit, but I am determined so boring to, to start with one yeah it's like you would think i'm gonna start by the way literally me skipping 50 seconds like the 10 <laughs> second, I'm like, start with one, one ball i'm like yeah, yeah i've handed stuff to myself i know how to do thanks. one thanks yeah i want to see how to do three right now <laughs> um i'm here with mike falzone mike is an amazing stand-up comedian so podcaster much. og uh, excuse me <laughs> youtuber <laughs> If I, I may. I can't wait till that makes its way over. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be tasting my cold brew yeah. in a moment. Good, because yeah. I forgot. So it's nice to have one by proxy. That's correct. <laughs> um uh Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for um for letting me be here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because so I was going to be here anyway, and it's cool of you to be I'm cool. I'm glad to be cool with it. You're going to show up unannounced <laughs> yeah. anyways. Well, yeah. um, Mike, obviously, it's a call and advice show. People are calling from all around the world, all around the freaking universe <laughs> to get your hot pieces of take. Good. Now, I'm wondering um, what specifically today qualifies you as a perfect person to give these people advice on their conundrums as they're calling it. I've been in conundrums. You've been in conundrums, yeah. So, so I know, you feel I know like what they're all about. You've made it through, and I've and look at us here today. That's right. We're fine. What's a conundrum you've uh, suffered from recently? Recently, yeah. Recently, I feel like my big conundrum is like I for, keep forgetting to fill up the ice. I don't know. My life is pretty good, bud. And that's <clears> kind of why you should take advice from me, is yeah. because I've I've been in these situations. Sure. Not recently. Mm. I'm out of touch with them. Yeah. But my life is so good. I wake up every day and I'm like, fuck. Yeah, you probably it's have so one of those good. fridges that makes the ice inside. <laughs> yeah, you fat cat, man. I don't know that I've looked inside my fridge. <laughs> There's probably so much bad food in there because it's full, but I'm like, what is in there? You know, so there's stuff occupying space. That's my conundrum. Rotten. It's there's rotten, rotten food in or my fridge. Or is it fridge. sauce? Sometimes it's like you have an overflow of sauce. It's too many bottles. It's like, okay, a salad dressing from two years ago. Is yeah. it expired? I don't know. No one makes like a jar of sauce. By the way, they don't. <laughs> and I'll also say, my, me and my wife were talking about this yesterday. Do pickles expire? Hmm. Thanks. Very oh, thanks. Let's, let's go to an ad break. <laughs> <laughs> Come back. I'm juggling soft pickles. Um, dude, I got one of those. Uh, I went to Bay cities. Are you a Love fan? Bay cities? Great sandwich spot in, in uh, Santa Monica, Venice. Yes. Yeah. If you're at all Italian, even if you're not Italian, you're allowed to enjoy it. Sure. But, um, <laughs> all are welcome. If you're on the West coast and you're, you're missing Italian things and you're anywhere near this Bay cities deli, it's absolutely beautiful. I got a pickle in a bag from there oh. and the pickle was very soft it didn't have that crunch and it was like soaked in the juices <laughs> so it felt bad i don't know if it's supposed to be like that but that did feel like what an expired pickle would feel like well now you're talking about getting a pickle in a bag at a very fancy place i am and i'm wondering is it the same type of pickle that's like at a gas station that's like big, yeah big deal yeah so you went to bay city's notorious fa- famous sandwich spot yeah to buy a bagged pickle well it's not all i got <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. I did wind up with a few of the purchases. Okay. Uh, I got uh, the Godmother, which is their their sandwich. Uh-huh. Some uh, pork rinds. Pork some. rinds. <laughs> um, and then on the way, because there's always a huge line. Don't be afraid of the line. <clears throat> Embrace it. It's yeah. part of the experience. Mm. But I was on the line and I saw this pickle in a bag and I was like, man, I'd love to try this pickle in a bag. And I did and I regretted it. 
Yeah, a soft pickle for me oh, gives me you. a soft pickle. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm taking it one bite, and that's honestly what happened and why I wondered if pickles expired, because yeah. there was a jar of pickles that had not been opened in our fridge for probably a year. Yeah. And I took a little bite into it, and it was like biting into a freaking hot dog bun. No snap to it. No snap, no crackle, no pop. It Can't was, do a wet hot dog bun either. No, yeah, not what I wanted. But I am wondering, like, kimchi, they're just like, it's good forever. Or, and I'm I'm questioning that. Yeah, and like sauerkraut. Like I dare you to feed me. <laughs> yeah, like old ten sauerkraut. year old sauerkraut. <laughs> yeah. Like, is it fine? I don't know, dude. Putting ten year old sauerkraut on a hot dog on like a good hot dog. Yeah. I'd be like, oh. We're good. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> By the way, I did have a problem recently where after Fourth of July, I was fucking only eating hot dogs that were left over. I love hot dogs. God so. damn, dude. The grossest thing about me, maybe. Yeah, they're really good. How are you? Uh, how are you? How are you serving them? How are you? <laughs> how how are you, dude? How are you? Yeah, how are you? Check in a couple minutes. <laughs> how are you, man? Are you doing okay? Doing pretty good, dude. I love it here. That's great. Um, I love <clears throat> I love to just load it up with mustard. I'm really boring. I could yeah. eat a plain hot dog. I did that on the golf course the other day. I just housed a plain hot dog out of necessity. Mm. I love sauerkraut, but it's never around. I'm not that fancy. Yeah. I mean, really my favorite thing to have, to be honest. It's just a nice little snack. I'm microwaving hot dogs. I'm eating them late at night. Microwaving them. I also eat it. Yeah. Do you know, sorry, are you serving them up grill style every time you have one? I boil them. Thanks for listening. We'll do it back. <laughs> Well, well, Mike, I'm doing pretty good. The Thanks, phone, li <laughs> the phone lines are ringing off the goddamn hook here, I love it. and um, we've got to get to them. Uh, but before we do, if you like the show, you can consider subscribing to it so you don't miss a single episode. And if you love the show, you consider joining us on Patreon, where we have extended ad-free versions of every single episode, including this one, as well as freaking bonus episodes that are exclusive to Patreon that come out on Fridays. Love a good, hardworking Patreon boy. Yeah, we love to see a Patreon. And by the way, speaking of Patreon, you can now listen listen to the exclusive episodes from Patreon on Spotify. Whoa. So you can freaking go right there. If you're oh, on the yeah, they just had that. Dude, Patreon is a great company and they're always like <laughs> creator first since day yeah. one. We were like one of the first like eight people on, um, oh, on Patreon. Yeah. yeah. Me and my wife Zoe have this podcast called Welcome to Our Podcast. Huge that out. shows you how old it is because we were able to get that name yeah right it's new but uh yeah and we've just been like trying to figure that out since since day one but it's helped us out so much it's helped our, yeah. our enrich our lives and yeah, and sure. we'd love to see people uh, doing a great job with it so great yeah. job i appreciate that yeah, yeah head on over to patreon check it out but until then mike we've got people that have called in and they need our help i can't wait we've got somebody that's sort of figuring out that they're uber driving for their hookup so I hooked up with my crush and I thought everything was perfect. But lately I've just been like giving him rides places because his car broke down and helping him out and he's been like paying me and stuff. But like we haven't hooked up and he hasn't kissed me or hugged me or anything. So I'm really confused about the nature of our relationship. Thank you. Dude, so <laughs> you give your crush a ride and she leans in for a kiss and she she puckers up and like he, he just puts some money. <laughs> just a little debit card. Okay. Do you guys do take Venmo? Swipe. Do you take Venmo? <laughs> hey, I was just hey, wondering. Do you take the PayPal card? Do you do the scan thing? Are you gonna tell me your name? <laughs> I just feel like it, I need more details because it's just like so devastating to be relegated to being an Uber passenger. Hello. Hello. Thanks for calling, perfect person. You called, and I'm giving you a call back, and I'm here with Mike Falzone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's about the reaction that I <laughs> yeah, exactly. thought was going to happen. Hi. So we heard all about your problem. Sorry, I'm like, I'm high as fucking in the middle of doing laundry. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's where you want to be doing that. We love to hear it. I, I know that you're doing laundry to quell the woes about your hookup, but I'm going to need more details before you put on a full color cycle. <laughs> okay. Um. So basically, uh, this guy is my plug. He's the guy I get my weed from. <laughs> okay. And... <laughs> And what's his name and address? No, yeah. <laughs> can you give him a fake name? Like, can you give me a fake name for this drug dealer? Uh, Trent Crafton. Trent Crafton. Trent, he uh, actually has been selling to me and my now ex-boyfriend for like a year now. I knew him in high school, but kind of like re-met him through my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> okay. And um, yeah, I broke up with my boyfriend like a month ago. And I went over to his place to go get weed and told him I was single. Mm. And he um, he told me that he was into me and we ended up hooking up. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. since then, like, his car is broken down. 
So I've been helping him out like with deals and with like going to do his laundry because he has to go to the laundromat. Mm. We hooked up the first two times we hung out. And since then, there's been like nothing. He seemed like really into me. He like was asking to kiss me and like picked me up, told me he was super into me, like asking when I could come over. Love and um, love kept that. calling me like pretty, said I was super cute. And now like he's just like, he keeps saying he appreciates me and like all that stuff, but he hasn't been like hugging me or kissing me or any of that stuff. And Did I, he call you bud, give you fist bumps? How long, by the way, has it been since there's been a smooch? How long has it been? It's probably been like two or three weeks. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. it sounds, and look, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going to make a crazy accusation here, Go ahead. but it sounds like he's maybe using you for the car. Mm. See, I talked to a lot of people and they, um, because I didn't want to be being used, but he's been giving me like a lot of money and a lot of weed for free and also buying oh. me food and apologizing <laughs> like a lot. Sure. So I've also like maybe thought that maybe he just feels bad that he's been using me for a car and doesn't want to like also feel like he's using me, I guess, for my body as well. How many times have you hooked up if you don't mind me asking? We've hooked up like three times, but like twice in one night and then once another time. Or is it good? Are you having a good time? Is yeah, it worth it? Yeah. yeah, it was good. We both enjoyed it. And like the morning after the last time, he like wanted to have sex again, but he um, had issues. <laughs> He didn't have a toothbrush. <laughs> he didn't have a toothbrush. He was like, "Yeah, he got I a little bit. He got a little bit too high." Um, and sure. Yeah, sure. Able By the way, <laughs> that's difficult for this type of guy. I Dude, can I can I suggest something? <laughs> yeah, please. And what is your name, Miss? And you can give a fake name if you're not. Can you guys give me a fake name? Yes, Trent. <laughs> no, sorry. Um, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Tr uh, Tr Trenta. Trenta. Yeah. I just want to say, Trenta. Mm. No matter what the situation is. Mm -hmm. And this is coming from a guy who used to be, I would call me early F boy status. Oh, really? I used to hook up with a lot of people, sure. varying degrees of respect. Oh. And you you learn how to treat people yeah, after a while. For sure. And nothing has ever been more attractive, whether you know you want this or not, than the person you're hooking up with knowing their own worth. Oh. So if you're like, if you're getting exactly what you want out of this relationship, I'd say go forth and yeah. have a great time. Mm -hmm. But if you are feeling like you're needing more or you're lacking, yeah. if you pull back and say, Hey, this was fun, but this isn't maybe exactly what I'm looking for right now. Nothing is, is hotter and more attractive than that. Yeah, I agree with that. And I'm going to hop on pile on right on Mike. Please. I think that you just got to be like, Hey, look, if I, if I'm going to be driving you around, you're going to need to put some coins in the tank. Hell yeah. Put you know some coins I mean? in the tank. Put some coins in the tank because it sounds like what you're interested in is what you're doing plus a physically intimate experience. Yeah. Next time you buy weed from him, shake his hand. Shake his hand. Say, nice doing business with Thanks you, for the sir. Weed. Thanks. Also, if you don't want to buy <laughs> weed from him anymore, I know so many other places that you could buy weed from. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, do you live in a state where weed's not legal? Because what's the point of a drug dealer anymore? Yeah, I do live in an area where it is unfortunately not legal. Sure, gotcha. unfortunate circumstance. You hate to see that. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, I'm thinking that probably the easiest way to get a drug dealer to continue to hook up with you is by asking. Yeah. <laughs> that's accurate. That you know? is accurate. I don't. I think that that's probably the barrier to entry. And if he's like, "Hey, you know what? Whatever. Like, I'm actually in my new era." Yeah. Then that's fine for him to do. But I think that you absolutely can ask your drug dealer. Hey, remember when we hooked up? Do you, you want to do that? You want to do that again? Also, what's best case scenario for you? What are you looking for here? I don't know. Just I guess like a friends with benefits type yeah. thing. I don't really have like a lot of time for a relationship right yeah. now, but like I like being friends with him and I like the sex. Yeah. Presumably he would be into the same situation because he's also busy at running a business. Yeah, that's right. He's a business owner, dealer with benefits. Yeah. I've and he doesn't probably <laughs> and he doesn't have benefits currently. No. <laughs> he just has weed just at an apartment and probably a pet <laughs> lizard. Yeah. He does actually want to get a pet lizard. He yeah, wants to get, sure. yeah, that's, yeah, this guy is a cartoon. If course. you were to draw him, you'd be accurate. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think if you want to continue hooking up with your drug dealer, the only thing that's separating you from doing that is asking. I do appreciate you calling in and I hope that you get back to your laundry and everything gets super clean. Thank you so much. You're, you're the best. Thanks for calling in. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a great day. <laughs>
<laughs> Dude, nothing, nothing funnier than a cutoff. Yeah, hang up. <laughs> Just a boom. Yeah. And one more. Th- and one more. Th- um, hey, that was hey, really hey, fun. Hey, that was great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks yeah. for being on the show. <laughs> No. My favorite thing is that the show ends every couple of minutes. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, I also went through my sort of, I wouldn't describe myself as a fuck boy, but I was just sort of out there getting around, getting into town. And yeah. so was my, my wife as well. And then we yeah. met sort of out in the wild and then we we're like, oh, this is way more Same. fun and better. Same. Yeah. Um, really enjoyed my time. Didn't even know what a fuck boy was at the time. Yeah, there was just no word for it. Life. Yeah, you were sort of painting the path with care, <laughs> <laughs> which is gross. But I was doing it. Um, no, but hooking up was was super fun. And then you realize that uh, I was having highs and lows. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, it's it's so fun to hook up with people. Yeah. And then as soon as they would leave, I'm like, oh no, I'm a lonely piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, I gotta look inward. Yeah. That yeah. was definitely a thing. I was just like, yeah. Well, I'm sad when I'm alone, so I'm gonna hang out with this person that I think hates me. And yeah. My therapist was like, "Yeah, I think we should maybe get in there and figure that yeah. out." Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's nice. You go through these different stages in life, and yeah. you you face some tough questions, and then you answer them, and yeah. you hopefully don't keep on pushing your feelings and reality to the side, and you make decisions, mm-hmm. and your life gets better. And look, I think that this person who just called Tranta. I think she's going to be with the drug dealer forever. Forever. This is her soulmate. Uh But I will also say, oftentimes I have found that um, if it's easy, then it's easy. And you notice that. Yeah. And that's the thing that you kind of tend to stick to. Although a friends with benefits thing can be whatever. Dude, friends with benefits is the the reason why friends with benefits is so hard Mm. is because I always like, I used to give this analogy of a pendulum. Like everyone's their own pendulum is swinging at their own speed, right? Mm -hmm. And friends with benefits only works if your pendulum is swinging at the same speed at the same time as somebody else. If one person wants a fraction of something different, Mm -hmm. it's eventually not going to work out. But if both of you, please (laughs) don't let me stop you, dude. And we'll be right back. For those listeners, for those <laughs> listening, I moved my hand to the soundboard, didn't press anything, moved it on back. Dude, I have uh, another podcast called Dynamic Banter. Yes. Where my partner, Steve Zaragoza, is right. almost exclusively touching buttons. So I'm used to, you're not going to throw me off at all. I'm very used He's to it. hitting you with sound effects left and right? Yes. And if you Talk feel- me, Willis. <laughs> It is, and there it is. This is kind of like Bizarro Universe, where yeah. I'm not used to any of the buttons, but yeah, I do new. expect them. Yeah, I don't um, have that many. Yeah. I only got, I've only got eight. <laughs> I've got a couple, <laughs> and one of them's the theme song. Fun. Wait too long on a punchline, and you're gonna kill the joke. Make your customer wait too long for checkout. Mm, you just lost a sale, buddy. Power your business with the internet's best converting checkout experience. Get Shopify. <coughs> Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. Shopify puts you in control of every sales channel, so whether you're selling satin sheets from Shopify's in-person POS system or offering organic olive oil on Shopify's all-in-one e-commerce platform, you're covered. And baby, am I buying olive oil on a monumental bulk level? Yeah. I'm a big believer in tools. Having a drill, having a camera, having a freaking painting materials. And what I love about Shopify is no matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. They're helping you now and they're going to be helping you when you're in the Louvre for paintings. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is truly a global force powering all birds, Rothy's in Brooklyn and, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across over 170 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. This is Possibility, powered by Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash perfect person, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash perfect person to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash perfect person. Can you even believe that we've had seven months without an NFL game? I certainly can't, actually. 
Crazy, right? Well, good thing that's over. NFL is here in DraftKings Sportsbook. An official sports betting partner of the NFL is giving you a can't-miss offer for week one. This week, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just five bucks on any NFL game. And if you know me, you know I love cash, and I love to make a little bet on a big game because that can be very fun and also good for me to get the $200, actually. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with a game day greatness. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game day this September. Check the app to see what you get. Download now and use code PERFECTPERSON to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. That's code PERFECTPERSON only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, KS, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Go and get it, Kings. Well, we got to get to another call here. Um, uh-oh, this is someone having an issue. Hi, Miles. I gave my best friend half a hand job, uh, and we just now <laughs> aren't acknowledging it, and we work together. So please help me. Uh oh. <laughs> Hold on. Uh-oh. Hold on. I can't wait until we get to this one next week. Yeah. Because. Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Half Next month is going to be job. crazy. Um, but no, yeah, half a hand job. I mean, it sounds like sort of it was borderline an accident or it was sort of like a drunk. <laughs> I guess I don't know. It would be an accident. I was like looking for their keys in their pocket. Is there a. Sorry. I'm looking for something. There's also just that feeling of when you've hooked up with somebody you work with and walking back into work and just being like, Howdy. Hi. And I'm going to need those reports. (laughs) Which half of the hand job did you get? (laughs) (laughs) It's a really good question. So we're going to have to get some more details here. Hachi Machi. Do you have any initial thoughts? Oh, never mind. (laughs) <laughs> hello whoop, whoop. hand job police we're here to take your oh. call from, welcome to perfect person and uh, i'm here with mike Belzone. uh hello hello how are you we heard all about your hands we heard all about the half a hand job you oh. tried to give and your, your co-worker and uh we're gonna need some more details so we can properly direct your call yeah which half of the hand job did you give yeah uh, it was my right hand. No, I mean like which that- the first part or the last part. Well, how would you do the last part without doing the first part? <laughs> Not really up to me. That's a great point. Um, so okay. it was it was the first part. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Continue. He's also my boss. Ah. Okay. You didn't put that in the voicemail. Yeah, kind of want to give the second half to the boss. I said we were we work together. I'm in the theater industry. You're in the theater industry. Interesting. And are there bosses yes. in the are you in the same play? Like is he playing Conrad Birdie and you're playing, <laughs> 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 He's my boss, technically. Right. So like he's the director and I'm the choreographer. Okay. Mm. I mean, I get how long is the production? Um, we do about five months at a time, but which, we've done seven shows together. Which is it guys and dolls? No. Is it, a, is it one of the common ones? Let's see. Let's just name off Sweeney hairspray uh, grease. Oliver twist. <laughs> Oliver twist. <laughs> Oliver twist. Yep. Nope. Um, before you move on, we got to the, the musical cause it's going to help us figure yeah. out what the choreo is going to be. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. that's going to help paint the scene for what type of like, if you're directing the dancers, is it like, Oh, is it like, um, is it food glorious? Is it food? Chicago? Like yeah. Food glorious food. Yeah. Like it's going to sort of affect how he perceives you. It, it was Chicago. That's absolutely <laughs> right. By the way. He had That's it coming. Right <laughs> he had it coming. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. Love guessing right. That was good. You named it. So what's the vibe like now? So, okay. So first what happened is we got really drunk mm-hmm. and I had had feelings for him a while ago, but got over it because he told me he didn't like me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Which part was that? You know. Was I getting over the feeling? <laughs> <laughs> It was. It was that magical feeling of getting over. It's the, last, the first exhale after you get your yeah. feelings leaving your body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the last time I cried about him and I was done. That yeah, was all out. Yeah. So healthy. Um, got over him. And then we were really drunk one night and things happened where I gave him half of a hand job because we were at our friend's house and he was like, let's go have sex upstairs. And I was like, mm, we're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Was this sort of like, and by the way, he said, um, like spontaneously, were you guys kissing? Was there sort of other clues that there was romance happening? Or was this the first time it was like all in one crazy night? The director of Chicago and the choreographer of Chicago <laughs> go upstairs. There's no one else at the party. <laughs> um, no, it definitely was like all in one night. We never kissed. He like put his hand down my shirt, but you know. Is he 12 years old? He put his hand... Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're totally right about that. Yeah. Put his hand on your shirt. Was he looking for something? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, maybe... <laughs> Did he drop his keys by your neck? Dude, so... He claimed he was cold. Nah. I'm nah. S- I can't... I, Man, theater I, I, kids. <laughs> call me... I guess I haven't been out in the wild dating, <laughs> but I don't know that other people are... Reaching for a hand down the shirt no, anymore. No. That feels like really interesting. It's like to me. first and a half base. <laughs> well, you want to know the worst part? I yeah. Do. All right. So I'm, you know, giving him the little hand job situation. <laughs> well, um, you talking and to me, he Willis? puts my <laughs> he puts my own hand down my pants. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. He you know, puts, he's like. Hey, you know, it'd be crazy if I didn't do any of the work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if I just take a nap while you have a good time. Yeah. He put that. Sorry. I, I, I guess I want to hear the rest of the story, but um, the, my results are not good. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, then he asked me how multitasking was going and I was like, bad, you know? <laughs> oh, cause okay. Oh, I he's see. trying to like he's trying do to be- a thing. Dude, I'm this sorry. Guy I'm, sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm really so disgusted sorry. with how bad this guy is at hooking up. I know. I guess, like, oh, I guess you know what I'll say before I cast any judgment. Did you? How do you think yeah. it went? How do you, afterwards? How did you think it went? Yeah. Were, were you sort of in, enthusiastic? You were enjoying the experience. You thought it was romantic and sweet, or no? No, because like he didn't even kiss me. Um, and then I called my therapist the next morning immediately and was like, we need to talk. Dude, not a good sign. No, not, not a good that's sign. That's even worse than the no. did you come conversation is did you call your therapist the second you got up the next morning? <laughs> yeah, whoa. Okay, well, this guy obviously sucks ass in my opinion. It's like stop directing at some <laughs> yeah, point. <exactly. laughs> He's doing a little too much choreo, okay, which is yeah. your department. Why don't you give me a two, three, four down my pants? Yeah, <laughs> It really sounds like, like, obviously, like, okay, yeah, I guess, like, consent was there, but you're, like, not good at the rest of the other yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it, it sort of feels like there was a lack of respect, too. Like, to me, there's no kiss. There's no sort of, like, you know, running Dude, down the hallway before you're opening the doors. You know what I mean? Starting this whole hookup yeah. thing without any kissing, that's like starting your play without opening the curtain. Yeah. It's like the play, something's happening behind the curtain, but no one is comfortable with the way it started. No one knows. Yeah, no. That's yeah. crazy. So I um, guess I'm going to say so- you now still work together. You had this experience. You have yeah. to work together for the rest of the time. I would encourage... Yep. And uh, and how are you feeling about that before I sort of give my diagnosis here? Yeah, um, not great because we haven't spoken about it. Like we just fully are not acknowledging that it happened. How did it end? Yeah. It ended yeah, with God. him saying... Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, it ended with him saying, let's go upstairs, but we were at a friend's house and I didn't feel comfortable with that. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I was like, no. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you. I was like, probably should just stop. Um, and then he got really mad that I blue balled him. Oh, he got mad. Oh, this fuck it. Fuck this guy so yeah. much. I'm sorry. Do have we given you a fake name? Cause it's <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Kelly. I can't handle this. This guy sucks so much ass and you should be leaking this information to other people in the cast that this guy sucks so much. You can't suck and be bad at hooking up. A hundred percent. Yeah. Your personality can't be bad no. and you can't be bad at hooking Dude, up. Dude, if you're going to be a complete piece of shit, at least be dynamite. In bed. 
<laughs> so yeah. Be so lame, people. Okay, have a good personality and be bad at sex, <laughs> yeah. or vice versa. Yeah, you can have both. Yeah, yeah. But right. um, this guy sucks ass, and I would, if I was you, I would be sowing information to the other people in the cast. <laughs> like, hey, by the way, this guy fucking blows. He sucks and is weird. Like. I that the idea that he got mad at because you wouldn't go upstairs is psychotic to me. What did the madness sound like? What did he say? No, no way. Hey, come on. It was yeah. It was like it was like well, you know that that's kind of lame of you uh, to do that. And I was like, well, you know, it's you, weird. I'm not gonna like. You know what else is lame? Putting my hand down my pants. You know what? Is, you know what else is lame? Musical theater. But we all love this stuff. <laughs> Uh, it's so good. And I fucking love musical theater so, so goddamn much. But <laughs> hey, that's also not so cool. Yikes, man. I'm sorry that you no. were in this situation. Yeah, that really sucks. And it's such a fucking bummer because you have to work with this person. But um, I would be, uh, yeah, one, leaking information about how much this guy sucks to the rest of your cast. And also, if this guy is mm -hmm. at all, like... Do you feel a need? Because I don't know that you need to, but do you feel a need to go up to him and be like, hey, by the way, that like sucked? Or do you feel like you just want to move on? Um, I feel like for closure's sake, I need to be like, hey, that was trash. You know, like just what you said. And, and like, I think and I think probably awful. a good way a good way to do that is to like go in and be like, hey, look, I liked you. Like you sort of, it, it felt like you didn't like me and that experience was not cool for me. Mm -hmm. And it felt like you took advantage yeah. of the fact that I liked you for real. And then we got into a weird situation. So in the future, like that makes me feel disrespected. I think anytime you can mm. turn it on someone, instead of like uh, making an accusation, like leading with how you feel like that made me feel shitty because I liked you. Yeah. If you tell someone that you like them for a certain reason, it's not like, I mean, obviously it's true, but then they're going to be like, Oh shit. Like I like the feeling of being liked, but now I've betrayed that because I was weird. And yeah, the part of that, that kind of double sucks is now you have to have this weird conversation where they're going to kind of be on their heels and one of two things is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Either they're going to mm -hmm. like lash out again. If they're the kind of like loser who gets mad at getting blue balled, such a loser, or they're doing this, mm -hmm. like I'm on my back foot, like apologizing thing, which you don't even know if it's genuine or not, you know, cause you've mm -hmm. kind of like, you've, you backed them into this corner where they're kind of faced with honesty now. And now you're like, okay, well, if you're apologetic, can I trust that you're, you know, how do you know it's genuine? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that was a gavel. That was a gavel. That was the judge <laughs> slamming, slamming Nickelodeon gag with a gavel. Um, but judge Judy um, has made her decision. That's correct. <laughs> that's judge Judy. Receipt. Fireworks explode <laughs> by yeah. Judge Judy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm so sorry you had to go through this situation. Um, how much longer do you have left in the run? Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that yeah, if it's gonna that's make you feel question. closure to to do this, I would do it. Um, uh, if it helps to do it towards the end, do that. But if it also helps to, that you want to do it right now, mm -hmm. so then way you have sealed the relationship a little bit before you move on. Like that's cool too. You know how everybody gives little speeches before yeah. the last day of the, of the run. <laughs> that should be your speech. He tried to put my own hand down my pants. Anyway, it's not a great show. Everybody <laughs> have a great show before the dress rehearsal. <laughs> Break leg. Fuck. So what do you, what do you think? Um, how, how much, how many shows do you have left? Oh, we haven't even started. Oh, no. Oh, that sucks. I should probably do it beforehand. I think so. And like, cause it's a very adult conversation to be like, <clears throat> I don't want this to be weird. Yeah. Let's just address this and then go forward in a very professional mm -hmm. yeah. manner. Exactly. It's also like you shouldn't have to be burdened with feeling weird around a person who wronged you. Yeah. And I think so often it's like, yeah. yeah, this guy was kind of a dickhead. So now you are mm -hmm. burdened with feeling weird around him because you haven't said this piece, but by you saying it, he's yeah. going to then have to deal with his actions. Yeah. But like, it's not worth it for you to be like, I don't want to deal with it because you're still going to be feeling like kind of awkward around him because you haven't dealt with this conversation. So I would do it sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. And um, then also again, leech information like you are spotlight <laughs> about how much this guy sucks to everyone in the guest. Yeah. You also want to let him know that the window's not open anymore. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we will still drink together. So like, yeah. Gotta you yeah. Drinking with boundaries. That's where it's at. I mean, you know I think I mean? The, the thing with that mm -hmm. is like, obviously you're in a cast, you don't want to be weird, whatever. If you find that drinking with him or hanging out with him socially is making you sad, 
then you got to stop doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's hard. Yeah. Like that's annoying, but just examine that. If you're like, you know what, whatever, fuck this guy. But like, I'm going to be around the group and stuff like that. That's great. Just examine if you are being burdened by that or if that sucks for you and then change your behavior. If that's mm -hmm. the case or figure out who he mm -hmm. hates and fuck that person. Yeah. Figure out who he hates and fuck that person and let everyone know that he's weird. That. <laughs> you talking to me, Willis? That. Well, um, thank you so much for calling in. <laughs> I'm so sorry that you had to deal with this. Thank you for all the advice. Yeah, no problem yeah, at all. You. Uh, you're the best. Have a great run. I'm sure the choreography is going to be great, even thank though the you. direction sucks. Oh. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Thank you, guys. Have Holy a good shit. day. You're great. Bye -bye. Have a good day. Bye. Holy Ooh. moly. Holy moly. Man, what a nightmare. Dude, insane to be. I know that some people can't help it, but insane to be that bad at hooking up. <laughs> Like that could have been such yeah. a nice work relationship, friends with benefits. Thing, Completely. Yeah. If, if you're not weird about it and getting weird about. <sighs> oh, that's crazy to me. It's like, it's so kid. Yeah. It's so it's like, very, I'm you should 15. have grown out of that. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I just think that, I mean, I think it's pretty common, unfortunately, like yeah. a lot of women have experiences like that, Yeah, but it's just like, God, what a what a loser move to do. Absolutely. And I, uh, yeah, if you're at all listening out there, sex is not something that you is guaranteed. I think I just said this about a booty calls, but booty saying that booty calls are pulling a slot machine. Mm -hmm. And when you send the text, you're not sure that they're going to come over. You're not sure that you're even going to hook up. Yeah. You're just guaranteeing a chaos situation. Yeah. And I think in, in like situations like this too, it's just like, just because you start go undergoing anything. There's no guarantee here. No. You just got to be gravy, baby. You got to be flexible. I, I, I promise you that it's not going to be good unless both people want what's happening. And oh, that's no. a very like elementary thing, but yeah. I've, you know, I have been in a situation in my younger, more wild days where it's like somebody doesn't want to do something and you're bummed out. Like, yeah, you're bummed out physically or whatever, but you, you got to know that it's not going to yeah. be good if you're not both on the same wavelength. Yeah. And then if you, what you at least do at that point, if you respect somebody's boundaries yeah. is maybe, um, there's a possibility to have a great time in the future. Yeah. But if you're all weird and you pull back and you get aggressive about it, you're just, you're destroying any, um, possibility of it happening that night, obviously, mm -hmm. and having a good time or in the future. hundred percent. And there's also like, an, I feel like a new thing that's like, I don't know how to describe it other than like hipster consent where uh -huh. dudes will be like, no, for sure. Like I love women and actually like, I really respect them actually too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then like, but they're like, oh, come on. But like, wouldn't it be actually sick if like, right. 15 could... minutes have passed. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> no, like, it's like these like people who act super like, I'm actually super with it, but then yeah, like, yeah, yeah. for real though, like a half hand job would Dude. be nice. Using language that is built to protect people from certain yeah, things. Yeah. But oh, this is, is what yeah. a good person would say. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah, like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we're all smart enough just to like use therapy language to be better sociopaths yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So um, yeah, I wish there was an authenticity test like on antiques roadshow but for people <laughs> <laughs> there's a part of the 23 in me that tells you if you're a piece of shit <laughs> you you come in in a suit look, at, yeah. look them up and oh down. that's fake that's a fake guy that's fake as fuck by the way <laughs> that guy was made in 1984 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not vintage yeah no 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 that's a 1990 guy oh god that's um, <laughs> all right let's get back to the fucking phone lines here uh, what a fun show thank you very much I do appreciate it. Uh oh, someone is having a little bit of trouble with a karaoke night. Uh oh. Hey Miles, um, so I'm having karaoke with some friends later tonight, and I found out that apparently one of my friends that I invited, her roommate's birthday is today, and I don't want to be an asshole, but I also don't know her well enough to just make it a birthday party for her, mm -hmm. and I don't want to like start shit or make it about me. So I just I need some advice on how to handle this. Thanks. What a unique dilemma. Yeah. If you're having a karaoke night, uh oh, it's your friend's birthday. Well, I guess I'm curious a little bit. What's the downside for making it her birthday? Uh huh. She's like, I'm I i do not have it in me to make a make it a birthday. And I'm a little bit like, but does it matter? Dude, I get both sides of that. Yeah, because you're like, I don't want to have to get a, a what, a cake? No, but it's like <laughs> Let's say you go out every Tuesday and that's your thing. Yeah. And now somebody else is bogarting it Meredith's with their birthday. Meredith's fucking birthday, yeah. And who knows if Meredith is cool or not? 
nobody knows Meredith except yeah. for this one girl. No, if Meredith and it's a roommate situation, it's not even a friend situation. Yeah, it could be random. Damn, we're gonna need some more details here before we give our di- before we give our Judge Judy ruling. Sure. What's your karaoke song? <laughs> Cherry pie. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you called perfect person. And we're here to give you a call back because freaking some friend's roommate's birthday is going to ruin your night out. I don't think so. I'm here with Mike Falzoni. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Fine. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm a stranger. Uh, I'm I'm good. Uh, you are a stranger to me. Um, I'm Gwen. Hi, Gwen. Oh my God, Gwen. What's up? How's it going? <laughs> How are you? Long time friend of the show. I'm I'm good. Yeah, I'm one of the one of the mods from the old Twitch days. That's absolutely <laughs> correct. Gwen, what the hell is up? And which friend of yours is spoiling your karaoke? Oh my night? God. Okay. So like, here's the thing. Okay. So she's not like. Spoiling it, spoiling it. It's I, probably a little more of me like projecting more than anything else. Yeah. So I'm I'm just trying to get together some people to do like a karaoke night because my friends and I really like karaoke and we haven't done it in a while. We're gonna be moving soon. Last chance to do it in this space before we move. Oh, last chance. All that good stuff. Okay, yeah. so that adds some spice to it. Where this is sort of a once in a lifetime event. I mean, which, when you put it that way, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah exactly this is gonna be a night um, you're never gonna forget and what meredith your no. friend's roommate's gonna come in and make it all about her first of all do you even like meredith so like <laughs> i feel like it's not that i don't it's not that i don't like her it's that i just don't really know her super well uh-huh. yeah like okay. She is like a a friend of a friend and i need i need a name for my my friend our mutual friend Trent. 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 Okay. That that's fine. That works. Good. Um so Trent and Meredith both recently moved to the area that I live in. Mm. And I already knew Trent. We were already good friends. Um the other person that lives in their house we're already good friends with. So Meredith is like the only person that like doesn't really know our friend group. Yeah, okay. And has been over for karaoke at our place one time before and I think got like overwhelmed by the the volume and level of chaos at the karaoke and left like really abruptly and I felt like really bad about it but I like didn't really know what to do. Well, yes. that's not really your problem. That's not it? your problem though. So it sounds like Meredith couldn't quite hang at karaoke, which honestly seems like a Meredith issue. She doesn't fit the friend vibe. She, she doesn't fit the friend. <laughs> somebody telling that to your face. You don't Sorry. fit the friend vibe. Sorry, Meredith. Like it sounds like Meredith oh is not. She's out. Meredith's out of place at a karaoke bar. She's trying to sing fucking who gives a shit, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And and you and your friends are there to sing cherry pie. <laughs> I mean, like we just do, we do karaoke, like in our living room at home. We're not going like out oh, anywhere. Like house. we're just like vibing. Oh, that's yeah. really fun. Okay. So, and then, you yeah, know that's what? why it's like the last chance in this place. Cause we're moving soon. Meredith needs to unfortunately hashtag deal with it yeah. because it's at your home. And, and di- by the way, did your mutual friend ask where they like, Oh, Meredith wants it to be her birthday. Well, it's not that she said she wants it to be her birthday. It's that I was like, guys, like, why don't we do karaoke on like this day? And yeah. um, a couple people were like, yeah, that sounds fun. And then one person was like, oh, yeah, it's actually this person's birthday on that day. I think Trent was like, there's one. This this person, it's Meredith's birthday on that day. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, wait, hang on. Like, I don't want to like hijack the birthday, but I don't want to like put karaoke off like because of it. Like, I that's that's. What That's time do you what time here. do you guys normally get together to do karaoke? Here we go. It's a schedule. Oh my thing. god. It like and and anywhere. It's like really chaotic. It could start at like six PM. It could start at like nine PM. Like so Okay, I've got it. I don't really know. It's kind of up in the air. I've got a perfect solution for you. This is fucking Yeah, all right, hit Judy me. Gavel hitting <laughs> slamming down. <laughs> um literally, this is about to fix all your shit. Because you're going to have karaoke. Right. You're going to do your business. You're going to add to the group text. Oh, why don't you all come to karaoke after, after. your birthday thing? Yeah. And when Meredith's there, this is going to blow her goddamn mind. Meredith's there and you're literally like, oh, looks like my song's up next. Meredith, will you sing it with me? This is how you guys get bonded for life. Yeah. And the song 
What do you think the song is, Mike? Happy birthday. God damn right it is. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Oh, bitch. my God. The song is happy birthday. The song goes out to Meredith. <laughs> You know what? I was a little sussy of the idea at first, no. but like you, you got me with the happy birthday. You told me on the happy birthday. This is fucking a hole in one. This is what fucking you gotta be doing this. Yeah. If you don't do this, it's a huge misstep for you and Meredith's career together. Especially if she hates it. Yeah. <laughs> So funny to watch somebody frown saying happy birthday. God. And especially when it's on in karaoke. So it's like, is there other words to yeah. the song? Is there additional verses? Dude, Who knows? So funny for her to come back to the place potentially that she left abruptly because karaoke was happening to come back and not, and only sing happy birthday to herself. Yeah. She walks out. She's like, it's a little too loud. Yeah. But, um, I think oh Meredith is going to love this for you. And I, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so my concern about that I was going to be making it all about me when it's on her birthday. Yeah. That's that's become the intention. No. Now. <laughs> so, by the way, hundred percent karaoke is inherently about you. Yeah. And, and, and it's because it's also at your home. But I think giving a special shout out to Meredith doesn't mean that you need to make it entirely about Meredith. It's your night. Meredith's just there. How do we feel about putting streamers up? Okay, Mike. You're playing with fire here. I'm just asking. How do you I'm feel? Just taking the temperature. So, somebody is going to be bringing a cake. So mm. okay, that that's pushing it because now I feel like we're veering away from it being your <laughs> big karaoke. <laughs> night. You write your name on the cake. Oh, Trent, Trent said that that um, they're going to be bringing a cake. So okay, so then I mean, honestly, one and done. Meredith gets her cake during the song. No one can eat it after. That's it. But it's going to be the same volume okay. and the same ruckusness that you're used to. You know, yeah. you're still going to have your night. The other person, Trent, gets the cake. <laughs> Trent yeah. gets the cake. Trent gets the cake. So on and so forth. Ice cream cake or what are we talking here? No idea. I just know that there is going to be a cake, which is a re recent development. You sound like you don't want this person there at all. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm happy with Meredith being there. I just don't want, like, I don't want one person to come to an event that they don't want to go to on sure. their birthday day and yeah. like have that bring the vibe down you know i guess that is what we need to find out whether or not they want to be there at all meredith. let's give meredith a call yeah do we have meredith's number oh god no no i i don't unfortunately sometimes i, I have her discord and that's it we're yeah, gonna call that'll meredith do. on discord <laughs> well no um i think that yeah you oh, do god. a little happy birthday moment but i think that ultimately it's you and your and honestly you take charge of the event by saying this is the last night in this space and yeah. we've all come so far together and here we are one last oh hurrah God. and I guess Meredith's here also happy birthday to her wow okay that sounds like kind of a dick move to be honest no you don't have to say that you just have to, <laughs> you have to say that you just have to think you have it. to know that you have to know that Do you ever watch uh uh what is it how I met your mother we'll be right back uh, <laughs> We're going to go catch up. <laughs> uh, there's an episode of How I Met Your Mother where the main character is always kind of taking pictures with girls that don't last very long. Oh, so yeah, his friends photos. are like, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, who yeah, is yeah. this girl in the group photo? Yeah. And that I feel like that is happening uh, to you guys tonight. Yeah. All right. Well, I wish that I, I got the reference. I feel like that would have. Well, I just explained it. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> Sorry. We're all on the same page. Now. Yeah. Let me, let me bring it down for you. Ted, all right. Okay. That, that, Ted, that, that works. The lead That's of fine. the show <laughs> just keeps bringing girls to the group. Thanksgiving. Yeah. There's a Meredith. In all every right. Picture. Read the script. Give me a play by play. <laughs> I will. Um, well, thank you for calling in. Uh, Gwen, you rock. You the best. And you're going to have a great karaoke singing cherry pie. Tonight. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I gotta look up cherry pie first. So, She's but thank my you for that. Cherry <laughs> pie looks good so good, good, make a grown I man cry. cry. Thanks, Gwen. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> you know the last verse of cherry pie is all about birthdays. Do you know that? <laughs> Think about the last verse in cherry pie. I don't know that. There's I don't a even candle know. in the pie. I don't know beyond <laughs> literally what we sang. <laughs> That's your go-to karaoke song. No. You just scream the chorus. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, teenage dirtbag. I'll sing. Yeah, a really fun karaoke song. Sure, because you just have to scream it. It's not really. You don't need it to be on key. What's your yeah. karaoke song? I don't have one. I don't, don't have one. I don't like karaoke. I like what? that other people like it. Okay. You like to be there witnessing their joy, but you don't like to participate. A dude, I went to a karaoke bar once just to, just to watch. I went by myself and, uh, cause I just needed to be out and yeah. it was so much fun. I sat at the bar and I just watched people 
pretend to do that yeah. for a long time. And I loved it, but being a musician for a long time and burning myself out on being uh, a musician, sure. I'm like, I don't need to be singing right now. This is not for me. Oh, interesting. This is for everybody else. Well, there is an element of like, I imagine you're good at singing. You're a musician. I'm fine at singing. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> if we're being honest, welcome back to self awareness <laughs> podcast. <laughs> well, no, I think it's like part of it's like, I remember going with, um, musical theater kids speaking of, for sure. and, uh, they would kind of go for it in a way that was a little bit much. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, in LA, no, in, in, <laughs> <laughs> there's no musical theater in LA. Yeah, it was all in New York, baby. That's why we got to end the strike because these karaoke nights have been unbearable in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> All the actors are singing now. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're looking for an opportunity to perform. Yeah. I've told this story maybe before, but um, I was at a karaoke um, and I was singing uh, Cha Cha Slide, Ooh. which is not a great karaoke song, but no. in a lot of ways, really fun. Sure. There's other verses that you didn't know. <laughs> it's like Cha Cha, real smooth. Also, it, the world is beautiful. Like it's Whoa, like there's the new lyrics that I did not know, but they're yeah. in the song, and it's really long. Happy and, birthday, y'all! Happy birthday, y'all! <laughs> and as I was singing, Johnny Ham, Madman himself, uh -huh. took a photo. He took a video of me. Nice. He was at the thing, and he he went. He <laughs> right in front of your face, no, literally yeah, uncomfortably. He pulled it out. <laughs> and I was like, "Who the hell is he sending this video to?" <laughs> But I was, uh, I was honored. Yeah. Um, nice. Actually, before we get to the last segment, <laughs> before we get to the last segment, uh, uh -huh. do you have any advice that's been changing your life recently that you feel like is a hot tip that's really good? Changing my life recently. Yeah. Well, advice that's been changing my life over the past seven years is kind of like don't worry about what anyone else is doing and yeah. keep your head down and and work hard and uh, you know the obvious trite stuff. Try to be a good person. Don't hurt anybody else. Yeah. But the really don't get caught up in anybody else's bullshit. Just like, you know, do what you got to do. You don't need to talk about everything mm. that you're doing. You make your moves in silence, but you, um, keep going. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people in creative industries are, are really, uh, kind of frustrated right now. And mm -hmm. I'll say all throughout my life of doing creative stuff and freelance stuff, I've never gotten more offers for work than when I have been busy. And that doesn't totally. necessarily mean, you know, like I'm getting hired for all these jobs, but yeah. keeping myself busy. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a place where the phone's not really ringing off the hook and you'd like to be uh, busier, create a bunch of jobs for yourself and make a bunch of things that you want to make. And it's only a matter of time until somebody sees that. And it's like, Oh, I want that person to do that for me completely. No, so, yeah. there's like a thing of like, um, if you're doing something, you have to let people know that you're doing it. So they know to hire you for that thing. I yeah. had a friend who was talking about directing. He was just like, Oh, if you just like tell people every time when you meet them, like, Oh, I'm a director, then you're going to get jobs. Yeah. Like he was just like, if you, because a lot of people, especially for something like directing, like you just have to create that image in other people's heads for yeah. that thing. Also mm -hmm. be good at it, I guess. But like, it's also important to just represent yourself accurately. Yeah. And I feel like I have trouble with that where it's like, I do a lot of stuff, but I totally agree though. Every time I've been like super busy, that's when additional things come in. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't know. It big, it, it's stressful, but good. That's just what it is. You chose this life, you know. I did. Yeah, I chose this life, and from this life, I shall return. That's another piece of advice I've been getting a lot lately. Is like I get, I'm a stand up comedian, so I I get stressed out about ticket sales all yeah. over the place. Oh my god! And I was talking to another, uh, a more established comedian, and I was like, I can't wait until stressing out about ticket sales is is just less. And they're like, well, that's the life that you signed up for. Right. Like, and I'm sure that even when it's a bigger, on. like whatever scale it is, you're just always kind of in that same. Yeah. I yeah. feel, I mean, I talk about this a lot on the show, but goalpost moving is something I'm like, you know, Absolutely. there was a time when I was just like, holy shit, I need $200. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I could just get. Like if I had $200, I'd be rich. Yeah. Like, and now it's like, yeah, I'm like doing great. I, you know, rent a house with my wife and my baby. Like, yeah. We're doing yeah. okay. But it's yeah. It's just the goals move and then you forget that the previous goals were yeah. excess. Now you have $200. And you're like, what am I going to do with all this? I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can buy a couple meals. Yeah. $200 in this economy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mike, we have one final segment and it's a segment we like to call get real. This is a segment we do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued. This is where we force a genuine moment in an effort to learn more about each other and ourselves. Fun. 
Um, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> the assumption is that we've been being fake since we met each other, <laughs> exactly. and now it's time to get real. It's time to fucking hashtag get real. Um, How long is this? Cast <laughs> away the bullshit, <laughs> and really line them up. Yeah. Um, you're obviously a silly guy. Uh huh. And I'm like, hearing, <laughs> kind of insulting. <laughs> <laughs> you're a real silly piece of shit. Say something sad. Say something <laughs> and then get out of here. <laughs> get the fuck out of my studio. Uh-huh. Um, what's something that you've been um, uh, thinking about in context of like, that's uh, something I'm working on? It could be something that in, is in your own life. It could be something that you're struggling with. It could be. You're trying to eat a different type of new food, but just what's something that you're working on that's like, um, I don't know, feels uh, important or rewarding to work on currently? Most boring answer is losing weight. Sure. Always kind of, I have the body type where I've been trying to lose weight since I gained consciousness. <laughs> consciousness. Uh, thank you. Welcome back <laughs> to getting it real. Uh, and keeping it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then I got my first compliment last night where it's like, oh, you look a little, you look a little thinner. So yeah. now I'm done. And I had ice cream last night. Love to ice cream. Celebrate. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. Huge fan. Yeah. Um, and when you spread that kind of stuff out, it feels more like a treat than what you do. I do, unfortunately. Yeah. I have been sort of pushing the gas on the ice cream <laughs> train recently. <laughs> I, I like minimum am having ice cream every night. Yeah. And then I brought it out at lunch yesterday and I was like, maybe lunch I did. Ice cream. I was like, maybe I did. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but yeah. I mean, I just love a little treat to, to give myself a little wind down. Sure. Um, but uh, no, but it, it's, uh, yeah, I've also been trying to figure out how I'm going to get fit. I'd like to be buff. I've got this little guy. You um, look fat. You look good. It's nice of you. Thank you. You also look good. Thank you. And then we kiss for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but I put your hand on my shirt. <laughs> put, I put my own hand on my pants. <laughs> Dude, just i and we've never met each other before, no. and I've never. And if, if you were just like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. <laughs> um, that's cool. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, Mike. For sure. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on down. Yeah. Uh, you're very funny. Where can people um, check out your stuff so they can get a little bit more of that Falzone? Uh, most everywhere. I'm just at Mike Falzone on uh, Instagram. Would love a follow from you on Instagram. I try really hard on there. On TikTok, I'm Mike Falzone Comedy. Yeah. And um, I have a lot of my dates usually either on my Instagram or on MikeFalzone.com. Mm. I created the show called the surrounded crowd work show, which is a crowd work show that takes place in the round. Mm -hmm. If you are in the Los Angeles area, I would love to have you watch some of the best comedians in the world, abandon their material and just talk to you instead of, uh, instead of doing material. It's always so much fun. Hell yeah. That's yeah. great. Um, we'll check out Mike's stuff. And, um, if you're out there and you're struggling, remember that no matter where you are, who you are, perfection is only a call away. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>